What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Hope you're all doing very well. I want to talk about alt characters today. You know me, I love to play this game with a lot of different characters. I can't just settle on one. I enjoy the dynamic gameplay that that sort of provides for me. So if you're like me and you want to level up a whole bunch of alt characters but you're kind of intimidated by how much experience you might have to gain, we're going to talk today about gaining levels, experience, getting to level 70 on an alt character. What are some different ways to do it? Because Blizzard has provided multiple different paths that we can now take to getting to max level. So uh, buckle up, join with me, and I'm going to tell you all about getting experience in Dragonflight on your alts. All right, so you've landed on the Dragon Isles, okay? You took the boat and you've landed somewhere over here. If you're Horde, I guess you'd be somewhere up here. But you're going to land in Wingrest Assembly, basically. You have to fight your way up here first. But once you do... You'll get up here, and you'll get to this this main hub area at the beginning. One of the first things I think you should do is pick up some crafting, some professions, sorry. And uh, most of what we're looking at here is uh, gathering professions, because gathering professions will give you experience. And uh, that's been in the game for a very long time now. One of the two best ones to pick up right away are going to be herbalism. So you can grab Dragon Isles herbalism here. And then you can also come over here and grab mining. And both of these are going to be really helpful for you, because they're going to help you get a whole bunch of extra experience while you're basically just tackling your regular uh, jobs that you're doing and your regular questing that you're doing. So this is one way in sort of two different paths I'm going to suggest here that one path for leveling is going to be just straight into like dungeons. If you just want to plow through a whole bunch of dungeons and just do a bunch of normal dungeons, you can absolutely do that. And that's one way, probably one of the quickest ways to level up in Dragonblade. But one of the funnest ways to level up, I'm going to argue, is actually by running around and doing the story quests and also by picking up the mining and herbalism nodes. They can be extremely powerful for leveling up your character. So you can see right here, guys, we're going to just mine a couple nodes here and you'll see some of the XP that we gain just from doing that on my Death Knight here. 2,500 XP for that one. That's actually a lot. That's actually not bad at all. Twenty-five. That's 5,000. I do have rested XP, so that would be about half of that as normal. But you can just you can just fly around and grab. There's some herbs. I don't actually have herbalism on this guy. That's a big fail. But um, I have blacksmithing. I'll talk about that in a second. But what's really cool about this is that you can, in fact, just chill out. And this is one, again, one path I think that is really going to be fun and relaxing for people to level up. Ooh, take a bunch of damage. It's just walking around and gathering resources. And number one, one of the great things about that is that you're going to level up your mining in Dragon Isles, which is good, because then it means you're going to be more efficient at mining, and you can take all the resources that you've mined, and you can actually just sell them on the AH if you want to, to make a bunch of money, or you can actually use them in crafting, and you can craft your own so guys, we're here at the forge, and um, you can get experience just by crafting items for the very first time. So this is pretty cool, and I didn't I didn't actually know this was a thing until I was looking it up. But you can um, actually get experience for your first time crafting an item. So we're gonna craft this here, and hopefully it's gonna give us experience. I'm pretty sure it's my first time. I have fourteen thousand nine eighty four, and look at that. It's my first craft. You can see, so I had fourteen thousand experience. I now have twenty seven thousand experience. So that was insane. That was uh, about 13,000 experience right there just for crafting something for the first time. So you can go through all of these items and just craft them for the first time and you'll get a crazy amount of experience. That's pretty good. It's almost like doing a quest. So um, that's another way. Not only are you getting it for gathering uh, the materials, but then you can go and craft the materials as well into something. And it's a, it's a, it's a double, it's a double edged thing, not double edged, but it's kind of got a dual purpose. Number one, you're um, going to get experience just for crafting that. And number two, you're going to have gear ready to go for later. I've got a Dirk now that I'm not going to use, but I got a shield here that I made. If I want to go prot, I have a 337 shield. It's better than what I'm wearing right now. Obviously, I can't wear it until I hit level 70, and that's fine. But you can get a bunch of gear and have it ready and waiting for you um, for when you actually get to max level. So amazing way. And, and it actually, this creates basically a whole other stream of leveling for players. Instead of being forced, like past expansions it felt like, being forced into just crushing through dungeons repeatedly, you can actually just chill and fly around and gather resources and craft them into different items for yourself and get a whole bunch of experience along the way. And you can actually just do this while doing quests, right? That's the most efficient way to do it. You find a couple of quests that you need to do. Maybe there's a couple of world quests you want to go do. There's a world quest I could go do right there. I fly to the world quest. I do the world quest. I gather a bunch of resources while I'm there. Like you can see on my minimap, there's some right here. And then I go craft some gear. So there's like 
multiple sort of layers of experience that you're gaining there, which is super cool. Of course, speaking of world quests, there's lots scattered around the aisles. I mean, this character right now is only level 66, and you can see I have world quests unlocked because I've done it on my main. You gotta remember that you can only do this if you've got stuff on your main, but there's all kinds of quests over here that will just give you extra XP. This gives you 10,000 XP just for doing a dragon riding race. That's pretty great. Those are quick. Those take like literally 60 seconds. Um, you go do that, you get a bunch of gold from the Dragon Riders purse, and you get 10,000 experience. So um, all these world quests here will give you about 10,000 experience on top of whatever other items you might be able to get, which is super awesome. So it's nice to have all these things unlocked for these alt characters um, when they first get into it. There's another Dragon Riding race right there. So easy way to get experience, guys, is these Dragon Riding races that you can just, again, fly around, have fun, do a little race, get some money, and get a bunch of experience along the way. Guys, another really uh, fun and cool way to gain experience is just by exploring. You can see in the mini-map above me, I've got this uh, flag right here. This is a Dragon Isles Expedition flag. So these are all over. These are the high peaks. You can see in the mini-map, high peak right there. Those are unlocked everywhere, and that's because of my reputation on my main character with the Dragon Isles Expedition. So you do need to make sure that you have some rep with the other factions on your main character. But you can just run around and grab these things, and they will give you experience as well. And reputation, of course. But um, just exploring, flying around. You see, I, get, I, just, I discovered Taldrassus and the Hatchery and Hornswoggle. Those will just give you experience as well. So again, it's really cool that Blizzard has come up with this sort of exploratory path where you're running around and mining resources and just exploring high peaks and uh, finding potentially finding uh, dragon riding glyphs if you haven't already found all those. You know, I'm sure you already have. But this idea that you can just explore the game in the outer world and you'll get lots of experience actually doing that, tapping into the resources that are into the to the world that's there, which is really, really cool. And uh, as opposed to having to just do dungeons the entire time. So I really enjoy that and I'm glad that Blizzard has included that in the game. Let me run over here to the main starting area. Oops, I flew past it. Okay. When you first get here, you actually need to pick an area where you need to go. And let me get to that in a second. So once you finish that first introductory quest with Sendrax, you're going to get another quest called Adventuring in the Dragon Isles. And you hit Review the Scouting Map. Okay. So we go to the Scouting Map, which is right over here. And we review it. And then you can pick which zone you want to start in. And this is something that I want to talk about for a second. Because I think that there's one zone in particular that I think is just easier to level up in. And that is the Inaran Plains. And it is because it is just a big patch of plains as opposed to these other um, areas which have a lot of mountains and a lot of um, sort of regions hills and valleys and it's just not as open the Inaran Plains is really just like open season like you can just fly anywhere on your dragon riding mount and just fly from quest to quest to quest very easily and I think it's much easier to level up in the Inaran Plains do the story stuff in the Inaran Plains versus the other three Another great deal about the Inaran Plains is that there's a quest actually in here that gets you a weapon right away. So I'm going to choose to go to the Inaran Plains. Boom. And I'm going to I'm going to head over there and show you the quest for the weapon. So guys, once you get to the Ruby Scale Outpost right here at the bottom of the Waking Shores, you're going to talk to Ambassador and he's going to give you a quest to go to the Inaran Plains. And there we go into the plains. We take a little uh, objective with us. We're going to go into the plains here and the very first quest that we're going to get from the lady there is basically going to offer us a weapon. So let's jump over there. So here we go. We've unlocked the Maruk Centaur here, and this is the first quest. And then we complete it, and she gives us the next quest. This is the weapon that you can get, and it depends on your item level a little bit. I have a couple of weapons here, but this is if you have a really terrible weapon and you're just starting your character. Like, I had this character a little bit geared up from Shadowlands. If you really had a brand new character, you could figure out what you want to do for this weapon. And you just have to run up here and kill this rare, and you get a weapon. So that's sort of the introductory quest for the Anaran Plains which is really great and, and gives you that potential bonus. Now, again, as I want to highlight here, the Inaran Plains is just so open and free, and it allows you to use your dragon riding to your advantage. And remember, guys, your dragon riding is account-wide. is account wide. So I have all these extra glyphs from my main character that I haven't even spent yet. One of the big ones you need to do is get Dragon Riders Cultivation because gathering herbs and minerals will increase your vigor rate by 400%. So if you want to do the kind of chilled, relaxed path of just gathering, you know, uh, ore and, and herbs from the plants, then you need to take this so that you can just keep sustaining that Dragon Riding power and just keep flying around. And then, of course, you can pick one of these, uh, get these. You're probably going to have all these filled up. I'm still missing a couple here. You know, don't shoot me, but... 
Remember, your alts have access to all of these, so don't worry about having to pick those up again. And again, it's going to give you more freedom. And I think it just gives you maximum freedom out here in the plains because it's mostly flat. And the opening quest line obviously gives you a weapon here. And then the rest of the quest lines in the Inaran Plains, I've done the Inaran Plains for every one of my alts because I just love it. The rest of the quest lines that are here are really simple. A lot of them involve actually just killing a bunch of wild animals. So you just run out and gather a bunch of animals up together and kill them all together. And it's very quick, very efficient, very fast. And if you wanted to pick up skinning, you could also pick up skinning and get a whole bunch of pelts really quickly as well. So um, there's lots of good reasons why I think the Inaran Plains is a wonderful place to do kind of your main story quests. And then, again, alongside of that, you're going to be picking up herbs and mining some nodes, doing some world quests that are here, like these dragon riding ones, getting that extra experience, etc., etc. So I think it's a really solid place to start your journey. That's it, guys, for all the tips and tricks I have in terms of kind of the adventure mode version of leveling up your character in the outdoors. You can always, of course, level up through dungeons. You can just queue with the dungeon finder into regular dungeons. And if you if you can if you're willing to heal or tank, the queue will be much, much faster for you. So that is still, I think, the most efficient, quickest way to level up. If you really just want to power level a character, the best way to do it is going to be dungeons, basically. It's just going to be so incredibly fast. But if you want to have a little bit more of an adventure at it, then you can really try all the things that I talked about here, especially things like the professions. I don't have any professions on my monk here, but grab a couple of gathering professions or grab one gathering profession and one production profession. And again, as you gather mining nodes, you get experience. And then when you make crafted items, the first time you craft all of them, you're going to get a ton of experience for that as well, which is super cool. Again, flying around, there's going to be world quests, like dragon riding world quests that'll just give you XP. I mean, they all give you XP, but you can do really, really fast and simple world quests that can give you XP, which is really awesome. There's a bunch of high peaks to explore. You can just fly around and explore the area and get a bunch of experience from flying around as well. That's always something that you can do, which is really cool. Um, I love that they made dragon riding account wide of course this makes things a lot smoother for you and again i think the best place to probably start the story part of your journey if you want to do story quests which still do provide an enormous amount of xp as well i think the inaran plains is a wonderful place to start you have that first proving oneself quest which is going to give you a strong weapon to get started and it's all just really open and the quests are easy you just have to basically kill a bunch of beasts gather a bunch of berries like that's most of the quests that you have to do and they're very simple very easy to do so those are my tips and tricks for you guys if you want to run some alts in dragonflight there's never been a better expansion to play alt characters i promise you they are so much fun to play you're gonna love it so get into the game start your journey and get a leveling up your alts now in some future videos guys i'm going to talk about gearing your alts because that is sort of a whole different ball game once you hit max level even before you hit max level what can you do about gearing your character so that you don't have to do a long and arduous grind of getting gear and i'm going to talk about that in a, in a future video okay for now get in the game get some experience on your alt characters you're going to love it so thank you so much again for watching guys i love you all i will see you in the next one